Hello friends, my name is Real Emil, and welcome back to some more Forza Horizon 3. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new car pack which has just been released for Forza Horizon 3. This is the Duracell car pack, also known as the March DLC, the final one you're going to be able to get with the car pass. If you don't have the car pass, however, it is $5.59 or your regional equivalent. Let's get into the cars, there's seven in this pack. And we're going to be kicking things off with the 1959 BMW 507, 165 horsepower, 161 foot-pound of torque, 2,690 pounds of weight, 50-50 weight distribution, surprisingly enough, a rear-wheel drive D-Class car, 371. Uh, the BMW 507 is a pretty cool-looking car. I kind of like it. I'm not a huge fan of these sort of classic-y cars, but... I can imagine if you put a couple of parts in this, uh, build up to maybe C-Class, B-Class, it could be a very, very good handling uh, vehicle, which would be pretty cool. But yeah, uh, not a car I'm hugely excited for, uh, but, you know, it is a nice addition nonetheless. Next up, we have the 2017 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1, 650 horsepower, 650 foot-pound of torque, 3,883 pounds of weight. This is an S1 class car, 841 in PI, rear-wheel drive. Um, I'm not a fan of the Chevrolet Camaro, as you may have known if you spent any time on this channel, and the new one I find to be absolutely bloody hideous. Um, the saving grace of this, though, is it is the ZL1. Now, in Forza Motorsport 5, they had the ZL1 2012, and that was a very, very good handling vehicle. Hopefully, this will maintain the good handling that that vehicle had. Uh, but ultimately, I find it hard to be excited just because I'm really not a fan of the Chevrolet Camaro. Next up, we got the 1992 Ford Falcon GT, 268 horsepower, 310 foot-pound of torque, 3,631 pounds of weight, C-Class car, 597 MPI. It is rear-wheel drive, as you'd expect, with a Ford Falcon. And once again, you've got your token Australian car that we seem to be getting in every single one of these packs. Uh, this one's, it's pretty cool. Uh, we haven't got sort of a 90s Australian car yet. It's mostly either retro stuff or really modern stuff. Uh, this one's pretty cool. It looks kind of weird. It's sort of a four-door fox body, but I do kind of like that about it. Uh, I can't say I'm going to be getting much mileage out of this car personally, but yeah, you know, I can't really argue with its inclusion. Next up, we've got the 2015 Jaguar E. XE-S, 340 horsepower, 332 foot-pound of torque, 3,787 pounds of weight, rear-wheel drive car, A727 in PI. Uh, the Jaguar XE is basically a rival to the higher-end BMW 3 Series, Mercedes, C-Classes, and the Volvo S60 Polestar. Um, you know, as far as its usefulness in-game... I doubt many people are going to use this car more than once or twice. Personally, I quite like it though. It is a modern Jaguar. I do really like modern Jaguars. Uh, I mean, they're just absolutely beautiful to look at. I am excited to have a play around with this car. Uh, yeah, pretty excited to see it here. Next up, we've got the 1972 Land Rover Series 3, 69 horsepower, 120 foot pound of torque, 3,097 pounds of weight. It is a D-Class car, 100. PI, it is all-wheel drive, and it is the lowest PI vehicle and probably the slowest car that we've ever had as a DLC. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really know what to think about this one. We've already got a Land Rover Defender in the game. Uh, of course, this isn't a Land Rover Defender, but they are kind of similar in body style. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what to make of this vehicle, to be honest with you. I can't tell you if I like it here or I don't. I can't say it's a car I'm hugely excited to get out there and drive. Um, but, is it a nice addition? I'm not really sure. This is one of the most divisive DLC cars in my head I've ever seen in a while, just because I'm not sure what my opinion on this vehicle is. Uh, it, it's probably a load of fun if you whack a lot of power into it, uh, but so is the Defender, so... Yeah, a weird car. And the final two cars of the pack, and in my opinion, this is the reason you should buy this pack. This is 1995 Nismo... Uh, GTR LM road car, 300 horsepower, 275 foot pounds top, 3,483 pounds of weight. A class car, 711 PI, rear wheel drive. Uh, for those of you who don't know this car, you probably never played Gran Turismo 1 and 2 as a kid. Uh, yeah, this thing was in those games and it was pretty darn insane. And uh, just, just look at it, it looks absolutely phenomenal. It is a really, really, really awesome car. I'm super happy to see it here. It's one of those cars which I would never really think that I'd want in Forza uh, until someone would bring it up to me. 
because, yeah, just seeing it here, it is absolutely glorious. I can't wait to just have some fun, swing this car around. Uh, it should be a lot, a lot of fun. And finally, but certainly not leastly, uh, this is the 1983 Volvo 242 Turbo Evolution, 225 horsepower, 250 foot-pound torque, 3,175 pound weight, C-Class car, 512 in PI, rear-wheel drive. Didn't expect it to have that much power. I've got to be honest, I don't remember this Volvo having nearly that much power, but that's an awful lot of power. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge Volvo guy. Absolutely love these things, and seeing the 242 in this game really is something special. This is one of the better Volvos ever made. It's certainly one of the most recognisable. Uh, pretty successful rally car, is very successful race car all in all. Uh, yeah, I can imagine this thing's an absolute hoot to drive stock, and I can imagine if you upgrade this thing, you have a pretty competent rear-wheel drive rally car, or maybe you could take this circuit racing. There's a lot of potential possibilities with building up the 242, and I think I'm going to be exploring a couple of those in a video at some point. But yeah, super excited to see the uh, 242 in the game. Overall, thoughts on the pack? This is a very good pack indeed. There's three cars that I really like in the XE, the GTR LM, and the 242 Turbo. Uh, the Land Rover, I can't really decide on. It is a pretty cool car, though. Uh, as for these three, you know, there's nothing majorly exciting here. Uh, in my personal opinion, but, you know, the, none of these cars are not deserving of being in the game, essentially, which is, you know, that's always good when you have a pack with, where all the cars, you know, certainly have their place in the pack. So there you go, friends, that is the Duracell car pack. It is worth noting quickly, there was also another car added today, which, if I just scroll over here, I will remember the name of it, because it's got a really silly name. Uh, the Tamo Racemo uh, is also a new car to the game. That is something that was given out to all players. Uh, yeah, they gifted that car out, so you should have that in your gift box if you haven't already. It's basically an Indian Alpha 4C. I'll probably take a closer look at that car at some point, because it's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's also worth noting that they've given us that. So yeah, uh, decent car pack overall. Good way to send out the car pass, of course, after this. Uh, there's going to be no more free DLCs with the car pass. You're going to have to buy them all individually. So yeah, uh, overall, though, pretty cool pack. Thank you all very much for watching, friends. My name's been The Real Emil, and until next time, a farewell.